Tuesday, baseball all-star game, little NBA news, Gronk, Brady, this is The Herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening, live in Los Angeles, iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1. Joy Taylor is joining me after a crazy weekend and a crazy Monday. Everything's coming down a little bit. There's a lot of sports going on here for the next few days. Joy, how are you? I'm great. What was it? It was Marvelous Monday, so today's a terrific how about, Tuesday. Uh... Yeah, terrific Tuesday. Turn up Tuesday. Turn up Tuesday, yeah. <laughs> Throwback Thursday or something. Uh, so yesterday, I want to start the show with this. Yesterday, I had to do an interview after the show. Didn't have to. I was asked to do an interview uh, with Dennis Miller, the comedian. Um, and uh, before I went on the interview, you know, you go into like a prep room, a makeup room. And the lady was, uh, she put on makeup and I started talking to her. And uh, she had a, she was a military kid. And I always loved talking to kids whose parents were in the military because they bounced around the country and they had to go into schools and out of schools. And what I find with kids that go into the military, and maybe the parents feel a little guilt bouncing around the country and stuff, but you know what I find with military kids? They're adaptable. They make friends quickly. They're not reticent to change. They kind of embrace it. They like new stuff. They don't romanticize the past. They're not traditionalists. They're really good at adapting and moving. And the world's never moved faster because technology and sports and analytics, everything moves fast. Sports move fast. NBA centers, they've disappeared. Fullbacks in the NFL, where'd they go? And, and I was thinking about this. LeBron James, as far as I know, nobody in his family, you know, he didn't bounce around with the military. But LeBron had a different childhood or maybe similar to a lot of people. He didn't go to the perfect prep school. It wasn't the old, you know... Perfect family. He had a lot of change. He moved around a lot. And like a military kid, it's one of the reasons I think maybe LeBron has always been great at adapting. For all Kobe Bryant's gifts, his game was his game. LeBron James is now going to be a point guard for the Lakers. That was announced yesterday. Chris Haynes is like, yeah, they're going to play him at point guard. And my takeaway is, oh, this is perfect for LeBron. LeBron is a great pivoter. Tom Brady, by the way, great pivoter. Aaron Rodgers, Little rigid, doesn't want to change. It's amazing. When I sat yesterday and talked to the young lady uh, as I was getting ready to go to the Dennis Miller show, right? And she just, oh, she'd been here and she'd lived there and she'd had that job and that job. She seemed incredibly carefree and happy, no stress. She's like, oh, it's just, I'm a military kid. We just learned to adapt. LeBron James in the middle of his career, the game changed. It changed. LeBron James in high school in his first six years was a freight train. Basketball, bully ball, bulldoze, get to the basket. All of a sudden, about six years in, um, from now on, shoot threes. He's a six, nine and a half forward. And LeBron James goes to Miami and changes the game. And he just keeps working on his game and adapting his game. Michael Jordan never had to pivot in the middle of his career. Michael Jordan never. Michael Jordan faced centers as a rookie and centers when he left. Kobe Bryant faced centers as a rookie. And then at the end of Kobe's career, the game changed. And Kobe was kind of, my game is my game. LeBron has been a great adapter. I don't know why. I really don't know why. But he is. If you look at his businesses, if you look at his basketball, he's constantly evolving his game. This is a perfect move for him. Some people, uh, you know, they have a, a life they grow up in, and they go to the same church, and they go to the same school, and they've got the same set of parents. And I change. They don't want to move out of their area code. 40% of Americans won't move out of their area code in their life. They say, hey, they like that. They're, they, By the way, change. I'm a, My childhood was all sorts of movement. People, dads, stuff. And so I'm used to it. Joy's bounced around the country, had a lot of different jobs. So I find I like people who've moved a lot because they're not rigid. They don't. LeBron point guard's perfect. This is, this is what's really made him as a basketball player. And, I, and I've said of the many gifts LeBron James has, chapter one is he may be the best we've ever seen. Chapter two is the dude was almost never hurt. And chapter three is he's an early adapter. By the way, because of technology, everything changes faster. I mean, just uh, technology plus analytics and sports. And the early adapters win. In baseball, the Astros, the Red Sox, the Cubs, the Dodgers, early adapters win. Basketball, LeBron very quickly saw the three-point shot. Even as a 6'9 guy, saw it as crucial. Eight, seven years ago, LeBron's like, uh-oh, moved into it. By the way, Golden State Warriors, Houston Rockets, moved into the three ball. 
And when I look at LeBron, um, he doesn't have what I consider to be a dangerous personality trait. And that, and it, maybe this used to be a great trait, but I think it's a dangerous personality trait now. Romanticizing the past, not willing to change. LeBron moving to point guard, I'm like, oh, this would be great. He's got a big, he's got wings. The Lakers signed a bunch of shooters. Now I got Jared Dutley, Avery Bradley, Danny Green, Quinn Cook. I think it'll be easy. And, I, and I'll say this. A lot of my favorite athletes, Brett Favre, not a great adapter. This is my offense. This is why I'm going to run it. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is great. A little bit stubborn. Uh, you know, Peyton Manning had wi his way to play football. And that was kind of the way Peyton Manning was going to play football. But I think LeBron will be perfect. I think he's built for this. I don't know where it comes from. I think it's an amazing quality. And I got to tell you, LeBron at point guard may struggle to stop some of the tiny, small, quick guys. He is going to be a handful to deal with if you have to face him. Uh, speaking of families, let me shift to this. It is very early. Most of us don't have a, a perfect childhood, right? Even the people who do, do they really? Some of you, I would call you late developers. And it can be discouraging when you're young, you're in your teens, and you see people flying past you. School's a little easier for them. Uh, you know, they're, they're better athletically. They're better academically. And you're sitting there thinking, man, I'm falling behind. It's a, discouraging. But I'm here to tell you, uh, don't get discouraged, okay? This is dad talking. Everybody evolves differently. Some people are, are late groomers, okay? Um, I was thinking about Kawhi Leonard this morning. So LeBron James was a meteor, cover of Sports Illustrated, all-star by his second year, rookie of the year, the chosen one in his teens. And here's Kawhi Leonard. Pac-12 schools didn't recruit him, largely ignored, traded to Canada, ends up with the underdog shoe brand. And yet... If Kawhi Leonard wins a title with the Clippers and they're favored next year, you do get he is moving into MJ and LeBron's class. Won a title at 22 MVP, youngest besides Magic ever. Goes to Canada. And have we ever had a guy win an NBA championship like this by himself? Tell me the last guy. No. Now he goes to a third team. Michael Jordan couldn't win with a second and wins another title. <laughs> Folks, he's getting into a very rarefied basketball air in my life. Third team title. And what I think is encouraging about Kawhi Leonard is that when you juxtapose him with Michael Jordan, who went to North Carolina and McDonald's All-American and Phil Jackson and one team for so, and LeBron James is a meteor. He's the number one player. And here's Kawhi Leonard moving right into their class. Nobody on the West Coast, forget the East, he played in California. Nobody wanted him. It happened in football. Peyton Manning was the number one high school quarterback and the number one college quarterback and the number one pick. And he started as a rookie. And he set the rookie scoring touchdown passing record. And then Tom Brady was actually in high school. He wanted to go to USC and they weren't interested. And then he went to Michigan and he struggled to start. And then he got drafted in the sixth round. And he backed up Drew Bledsoe. He's the classic Kawhi Leonard, the slow build. In baseball, there's Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper's on the cover of a magazine at 15, 16. He's the chosen one. He's the phenom. He gets the shoe deal. Minor league baseball, Pasha. And then there's Kristen Yelich. Yelich for the Milwaukee Brewers. Didn't make an all-star team until 26. Six years in the minors. It took people in Milwaukee to figure out who he was. Right now, Yelich is a better player than Bryce Harper. Tiger Woods was a phenom at 15 and 16, winning juniors. 11 years old, was represented by IMG. At three, he was on television with his late father on the Michael Douglas show, putting. And yet here's Brooks Kepka. Didn't get his card until he was 24. Didn't really explode until he was 27. Years of struggle and irrelevance. Kawhi Leonard, the slow build. Tom Brady, the slow build. 
Christian Yelich, the slow build. Brooks Kepka, the slow build. Success doesn't look the same for people. Don't get discouraged. Don't get bummed out. Some people have more support early. Some people take a while to evolve, to connect, to grow up, to mature physically, to mature emotionally. You look around sports right now, it's a very, very even combination of slow builders, late to star, and phenoms at 16. There is no one path to greatness. Maybe in business it's different. Maybe in other fields, pol politics it's different. But the world I'm watching in sports, Yelich, Kepka, Kawhi, Brady, don't face the early pressure. Have that lip chip on their shoulder because all the doubters maybe don't get the support and the, and, and the relevance early. But they, the late adapters and the slow builders, you know what? Not everybody evolves at the same speed. They're doing just fine. Remember Steve Fisher, San Diego State coach that recruited as much as you could recruit Kawhi Leonard? They never saw this coming. When we recruited Kawhi, we talked and said, he's a pro. And I don't say that often about guys that we've recruited. Our thought was if he stays healthy and keeps growing his game, which we think he will, he could be a long-time pro. But to say he would be an elite top five player in the world right now, no one, I think, could say that they saw that coming. So, by the way, Zion Williamson, he'll be the meteor. Ja Morant. Just drafted. He may be the meteor, but there's going to be somebody in last year's draft, this year's draft, or next year's draft that will be just as good a player. And you didn't watch them play for a second in high school or a second in college, or maybe a second in the first three years in the NBA. It took Kawhi Leonard four years to pop, and he wasn't as all star until year seven. Uh, coming up next, uh, UFOs, until I see a little green man, do not exist. And I do not believe baseballs are juiced until you prove it to me. Despite what Justin Verlander says, that's coming up. Summer is here, and you know what that means. Guess what I did last night? More grilling. This is what I do for the next four months. If you're